Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold with your end of the week analysis for the trading week ending Friday the 21st of April. I still expect the correction is most likely incomplete. It may continue for another one or few days, maybe one, two or three. When it's done, I'm expecting the upward trend to resume. There's quite a lot of resistance for gold at this point. The target for long positions remains the same at 1333 and if that's wrong, it's not going to be high enough. Let's have a look at the bigger picture for the Elliott Wave count first and then we'll get into some classic technical analysis at the end of this video, so for the second half. From this important low back here in December 2015, from this low to this high, this upward movement will subdivide best as a 5 wave impulse. Now it will also fit as a zigzag. I do have an alternate weekly chart that looks at cycle A unfolding further upward as a double zigzag. It's most likely to be an impulse though, so it's most likely to label, be labelled 1, 2 and now we're most likely to be within a third wave at primary degree within cycle wave A trending upward. Within primary wave 3 we've got an impulse for 1, an expanded flat for 2, another impulse here for minor 1, another expanded flat for minor 2. Minor 3 still underway, now my only concern about the labelling on this chart is labelling the middle of this big third wave over here. I'm looking at that possibility because gold very very often exhibits very swift, strong and extended fifth waves. Its third waves are usually longer than its first waves and its fifth waves can be longer and stronger still. This wave count would require that for minute 5 to end minor 3 and probably also for minor 5 to end intermediate wave 3 in order for these targets to be met. It's also possible though that we could move the degree of labelling within minor 3 all down one degree. We could have just 1, 2, 3, 4 in the small fifth wave for minute wave 1 to complete. Minute wave 2, a deeper pullback may still yet require to be un to require to unfold to the downside and it can't move beyond the start of one below 1240.24 so that's the bigger picture at the daily chart level. This base channel is going to be really important. Draw it from the start of intermediate wave one to the end of intermediate wave two. Place a parallel copy on the high of intermediate wave one. The end of minor B here is almost perfectly touching the upper edge. Along the way up if we do have any deeper corrections along the way up they should find good support at the lower edge of this base channel but at this stage of the wave count I would expect prices more likely to remain in the upper half of this base channel when it gets again toward the upper edge it should find a bit of resistance after that it should manage to break through the upper edge of this base channel that would ex be exhibited by the power of a third wave sometimes gold doesn't do that until it gets into its fifth waves at the end of its third wave impulses. Third waves may only subdivide as simple impulses, one, two, three, four, five. Gold, very typical of commodities, exhibits strong third waves and very, very commonly exhibits really strong fifth waves. I'm expecting one or more blow off tops along the way up toward these targets and maybe at these final targets. Let's have a look at the bigger picture or let's zoom in with intermediate wave one high is this point up here. Now this wave count suffices for both weekly wave counts. Remember I said that cycle A is either an impulse or a double zigzag. So we're either in primary 3 most likely or possibly primary Y, a second zigzag. Either way at this stage the subdivisions are the same so we're looking at the daily chart in exactly the same way. Here's that expanded flat for intermediate wave 2. They're really common structures. They subdivide 3, 3, 5. Now within intermediate wave 3 of primary 3 we have another first wave, another expanded flat for minor wave 2 and now minor wave 3 may be incomplete. We may have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4 to complete and then a final fifth wave. A, only a really really very small slight concern with a little bit of movement below the lower edge of this best fit channel. Fourth waves just don't always respect channels around upward movement and they can be quite time consuming. In this case minute wave 2 was a very deep double zigzag. That's how it subdivides at the hourly chart level and it's a 0.79 depth 
of minute wave 1. So given the guideline of alternation, if this is minute wave 4, we would expect it's most likely going to be a flat combination or triangle. We can eliminate a flat, we can not yet eliminate a triangle, but now at this stage I expect a combination is more likely. That may continue sideways for another couple of days or so. Minute 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory below 1261.00. This target for intermediate wave 3 assumes the most common Fibonacci ratio to intermediate wave 1, but if when we get up to that target, the upward movement just keeps on going through or the structure is incomplete, then I'll calculate a higher target using the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence. Let's have a look at how minute wave 4 may be unfolding at the hourly chart level where the end of minute 3, this high up here is this point up here, this is the first idea for minute 4, that of a combination. First of all, we can eliminate now the idea of a flat correction at this stage, because if this is A and this is B, B would be less than 90% the length of A. The minimum requirement for a B wave within a flat is a 0.9 length of its prior A wave. And at this stage there is no upward movement, not this one or this one or any of these, which so far has corrected a minimum 0.9 length of the first zigzag down, so I'm ruling out a flat at this stage. It looks like minute 4 is going to continue sideways as a very common shallow combination. The first structure in the double combination is a zigzag labelled minuet W, the double is joined by a 3 in the opposite direction labelled X and this is an expanded flat. The second structure in the double may be either a triangle or a flat and at this stage it looks a bit more likely to be a flat correction. It could still be a triangle though. Flat corrections are really common, they subdivide 3, 3, 5. Minuet B would need to retrace a minimum 0.9 length of minuet A at 1290.70 in order for that requirement for a flat correction to be met. When minuet B is complete, then a five wave structure down for minuet C would be expected to be very likely to move at least slightly below the slow here, the end of subminuet A, to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat. It might end if price comes down to touch the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio, about 1275.77. When I know where subminuet B has ended, then I'll use the ratio between A and C to calculate a target for you, I can't do that yet because I don't know where subminuet B has ended. Now I haven't charted it but it's also possible that minuet wave Y could morph into a triangle. I'm not going to chart that at this time because of this low here, it's slightly above this low so we could try and label a triangle A and a continuing B wave and then we'd have the C wave but if the C wave ends where it just eyeballing it, you would expect it to, it's going to have this piece of movement breaching or overshooting the AC trend line and triangles usually adhere really really well to their trend line. Sometimes you get little overshoots but it's really unusual to get what would here be quite a big overshoot and so I'm not going to label a triangle at this stage for that reason. The target for minor wave 3 is exactly the same as it's been for a while now, where it would reach the most common Fibonacci ratio to minor wave 1. Let's look at another option for minute wave 4, it's all the same to this point here, and now what if it's possibly over here as a double zigzag? The only way I can see from this high to this low, this downward movement fitting as a complete corrective Elliott wave structure is as a double zigzag. So this labelling is the same as the first chart, this labelling is the same, and this labelling is the same, that's how it subdivides. We've got three expanded flat and another three down. The problem here, and the reason why this is an alternate, is minute wave 2, the counterpart to minute wave 4, also really only fits as a double zigzag. Alternation though is a guideline, not a rule. It's almost always seen, but not always. Occasionally, second and fourth waves may take the same structure. They may still exhibit some alternation within their structures. For example, if they're both zigzags, they may have one of them a short A wave and a long C wave, and the other may be the other way around, a long A wave and a short C wave. You really have to be a bit flexible in how you apply that guideline of alternation. But in this case, they would both be double zigzags, and that is possible, but it's really unlikely. 
I want to chart this possibility because price is hovering around the lower edge of this channel here which is technically an Elliott channel. I've drawn it using the second technique with the first trend line from the end of minute 2 which you can see on the daily chart to this low here labelled minute 4 with a parallel copy on the end of minute 3 I actually need to pull that down very slightly. So this is an Elliott channel and price is not perfectly sitting within it but hovering quite close to it. So this is a roundabout where price is finding some support on the way up for the last couple of days. That might indicate that we have a low in place. We're on the next stage up for minute wave five. Now, sometimes gold's impulses can start out slowly and they can have a little bit of a curved look to them. I'm going to show you a really nice example of that later on of a big third wave. They start out slowly having a curved look and they just don't fit neatly into Elliott channels or even a best fit channel. That might be what's happening for the start of minute wave five. Now, just in case price breaks above the upper edge of the cyan trend line, I'm going to show you this on the daily chart. So let's quickly go back because this is really important. I've given detailed instructions of exactly how to draw this trend line on the daily chart. And I've zoomed in here so you can't see the anchor points further off to the left of the chart. Those dates are in the text article, so you'll have to click through and look at that. This trend line is providing resistance. It's been tested a few times. It's very, very long held. It has good, strong technical significance. And we did expect when price came up to this or got pretty close that we were going to find some resistance there. That's exactly what's happened. Price is now moving downward and sideways away from this line. If we get back up to this line during next week's sessions, if gold can manage to break above and close above that line, now especially if it puts a full daily candlestick above and not touching the line, not just a close above it, but a whole candlestick above it, then I'm definitely going to label minute four over here. Okay, let's go back to that alternate hourly chart. So that would be the requirement for this to move from an alternate to a main wave count. At that stage, I would accept that alternation was only seen in depth and not in structure between minute waves two and four. That's entirely possible. It's a guideline, not a rule. Let's have a look at some classic analysis now. First of all, before I go into the gold analysis, I want to address a really common problem I see online. Often people will send me a message and say, Lara, how can you expect gold is going to go up or down because this other market is doing this or the other thing. It's going up or down and gold should move or must move against it or with it. Often those assumptions aren't actually tested. They're just assumptions. But very happily, there's a really quick, simple, easy way to have a test and see if your assumption is true. We really should not be making assumptions in technical analysis. We should be basing our decisions on available data. Stock charts have in the indicators a correlation coefficient option. The correlation coefficient is an easy measure to see if one set of data has a correlation to another set of data. The correlation coefficient fluctuates from positive 1 to negative 1. Positive 1 being a perfect positive correlation, negative 1 being a perfect negative correlation. In order for two sets of data to be said to have a strong positive correlation, the correlation coefficient should sit between positive 1 and positive 0.5. In order for two sets of data to be said to have a strong negative correlation, the correlation coefficient should sit between minus 0.5 and minus 1. Any correlation coefficient that spends time between positive 5 and negative 5, and particularly if it spends time close to 0, fluctuating about 0, cannot be said to be correlated. So for this, correlation coefficient between gold and dollar yen, which is very often assumed to have a negative relationship to gold, you can see on this weekly chart that the correlation coefficient spends quite a lot of time in this shaded area. Sometimes these two markets are negatively correlated, but the problem here is it just doesn't persist. If you had been back here, the negative correlation would have been very strong, very, very close to negative 1, as it is now at negative 0.97. But you absolutely cannot assume that that correlation is going to persist because it just doesn't always do that. Here, 
there is zero correlation between gold and dollar yen. So any chart but of a correlation coefficient that has the correlation coefficient in this shaded area is an absolutely unreliable relationship. So you can't base your analysis on one market by referring to the other. You would expect, because this market I'm analysing for gold spot price is in US dollars, that gold should have a positive, sorry, a negative correlation to the US dollar index, but it absolutely doesn't. There's far too much time in the shaded area for these two to be assumed to have a correlation, negative correlation of any reliability whatsoever. What about gold to US bonds? There's almost as much time spent in the shaded area here as there is in this positive correlated area here. So this relationship is most certainly unreliable. For illustrative purposes, this is what a strong correlation should look like. In this case, a positive one between gold and silver. There is no time spent in the shaded area. It gets a little bit close here, but all of this time, and this is going back many weeks, this is going back to early 2000 and, sorry, to 2014. So we're looking at a good amount of data here. There is no time spent in this zone, so you can be quite comfortable in assuming that gold and silver are very likely to move together in the same direction. They can have little differences, but overall they're going to be moving in the same direction. That's a fairly decent assumption to make. Okay, so analysis for what gold price has been doing for the last few weeks. We had a stalled candlestick pattern here, but price has just continued on upward. We've got a really strong upward week here. Overall, the upward volume is a little bit light though, except for this last week. Now this is a red candlestick, but it's got a higher high and a higher low. And the balance of volume during this week was upward. So price moved upward. The balance of volume was upward. Volume shows an increase. This should be read as bullish. During this week, volume supported the upward movement for price. The long lower wick on this candlestick is bullish, although the red colour is a little bit bearish. So that might put the trend for the very, very short term from up to possibly a bit of neutrality. That may offer just a bit of support to that main hourly Elliott wave count. I'm going to be looking out for some very strong resistance if we get up to 1305 to 1310. That's an area of prior strong resistance and, sorry, support and then resistance here. So we'll look out for that. On balance volume at the weekly chart level is giving a really strong bullish signal for gold. Take that one really seriously. I'm going to give this one quite a lot of weight. RSI shows there's plenty of room still for price to continue to rise. It's nowhere near overbought. ADX is now increasing. If it reaches 15 or above, it would tell us that gold may be in the early stages of an upward trend, but it's not quite there yet. We may need one more week of upward movement before we get that bullish signal from ADX. Let's have a look at the daily chart for gold. We were expecting a sideways consolidation to last one or two days. It's taking a little bit longer. It's lasted a few days, but then fourth waves can be more time consuming than their counterpart second waves, so that's okay. Price may be going to find some support about the Fibonacci 13 day moving average. This is my short term moving average. I like to use Fibonacci ratios, sorry, Fibonacci numbers for moving averages. At this time, the short term 13 day moving average has a positive slope. The mid term moving average has a positive slope. The short is above the mid and price is above both of them. So for the short and mid term, we should assume, until proven otherwise, that the trend does remain up. For the long term though, the 200 day moving average is now beginning to flatten off. It still has a very, very weak negative slope. If it starts to turn up, then it might be beginning to roll over, but it hasn't done that yet. But it is important that it is starting to flatten off. And price is above the longer term 200 day moving average. For these few candlesticks here, they've all got long lower wicks. Now that's quite bullish for the short term, so I would be expecting Monday is very likely to move price higher. That actually fits quite neatly with the main hourly Elliott wave count. 
for these few days or so, volume has been declining even though price for these two days has overall within the sessions moved up. So that also makes this movement here looks like part of a small consolidation and not necessarily the start of the next upward trend. On balance volume at the weekly chart level we saw was really bullish. It's also very bullish at the daily chart level. I'm giving this a lot of weight. This offers quite a lot of support to the Elliott Wave count. This consolidation has now brought RSI down from overbrought. Now we're going to look at an example of a big third wave soon and that's going to show you that RSI can get very extreme when gold has a strong trend. But it's nice to see it brought down from overbrought. There is again room for price to rise. Now here's my really my only concern and I'm going to actually be quite concerned about this at this stage. Let's see how this resolves itself early next week. So I've got quite a lot of profit protected at this stage on my long position. ADX is still increasing, telling us there's an upward trend, but it's not yet done so, but it may be about to move above the positive DX line. If it does that, it would be indicating the trend is extreme. Look what happened last time it, happened, it did that here. We had an upward trend, it was extreme, and on this day here, that was where this upward movement ended, and then we had a deeper pullback, so the ADX was pulled back down below the positive DX line, again allowing room for the upward trend to continue. So I'm quite concerned about this almost extreme reading, but it's not extreme yet. With ATR declining and Bollinger Band still reasonably tightly contracted, or maybe still start, maybe beginning to expand, and ADX getting close to extreme, that all supports the idea of a little bit more of a pullback after another upward day, because this is looking quite bullish here, maybe then a couple of downward days to pull price down and pull ADX down and allow room again for that upward trend to continue. Let's have a quick look at GDX. We had a range bound movement here. We had what looked like a breakaway gap and an upward breakout supported by volume here. And I pointed out that after breakouts from consolidations, price very often curves around and tests support at prior resistance. But we didn't get that. We had a strong red candlestick closing well back within the prior consolidation zone and closing this breakaway gap. So this is not a breakaway gap. This is now a pattern gap. It's been proven conclusively to not be a breakaway gap because it's closed. Breakaway gaps aren't usually closed in the short or mid term, but pattern gaps usually are. So that's what this is. So it looks like GDX has expanded its range to just below 25 and about 22.5 is our final area of support. Before that though, there's this longer term area of price support and resistance, about 22.75. It looks like GDX may be finding support at the mid-term Fibonacci 55 day moving average. We've got a couple of small range days, really small upward movement, both on lighter volume. This looks like a small little bounce within a short term downward trend. I would expect it's fairly likely that GDX is going to move a bit lower before this pullback finally ends. From this low, there's a series of higher highs and higher lows. And so at this stage, at this point, that simple definition of a trend could tell us that GDX for this piece of movement is in an upward trend. The short term Fibonacci 13 day moving average was positively sloped and above the mid term average. But now the short term average is pulling down. It looks like we've got a pullback within a mid-term upward trend. ADX agrees it's declining, telling us we've got a pullback. ATR is declining, that agrees with that assumption that GDX is in a pullback. On balance volume gave us a bearish signal here that's completely negated now, it's giving us a bullish signal. So don't read this as bullish or bearish, this is neutral. Sorry, not ADX, on balance volume. RSI is neutral, Stochastics is neutral, and Bollinger Bands are also flat, telling us that GDX is most likely consolidating. So the midterm trend looks up, but GDX is probably consolidating, and I don't think it's found its low for this yet. I would expect it to be above this low, so I'll be looking out at 22.75 in the first instance to provide good support for this pullback for GDX. 
Okay, let's take a step back and look at this period of movement for the gold spot price from December 2015 to March 2016. This is a really good example of a big third wave in gold. I'm showing you this because I expect the current wave count for gold sees it in the relatively early stages of a big third wave. So let's have a look and see how gold behaves when its third waves unfold. One of the first things to notice is these very deep second wave corrections and the first one is almost always extremely deep, really close to a 100% correction of the first wave. This one 0.97, that's very close. Here's a deep correction, a deeper correction still, a little bit shallower but still over the halfway mark so we'll classify that as deep and a little bit deeper still. Now the next thing to note is they these second wave corrections don't have to follow a perfect pattern of increasing shallowness or declining depth. This one very deep, more deep, sorry less deep and more deep. Now if you said that this one is deeper than this one and that's a problem that would be absolutely incorrect. It's not a problem at all, sometimes that happens. I've drawn a curved line to show support and I've done that because no matter how you try and draw straight lines to create a parallel channel around this piece of movement for gold you will have quite a large amount of the early portion of this movement falling below those trend lines. Either that or your trend channel is going to be ridiculously wide. That's a really good illustration of gold's behaviour. It starts its trends slowly with lots of overlapping first and second waves and then when it gets toward the middle of the third wave it starts to show some extension, it starts to show an acceleration, an upward momentum. It gets toward the end of the first third wave, we start to have some real increase in momentum, another little bit of a consolidation and then here we have a good strong blow off top to end the middle of the third wave. Minuet wave 5 was a great blow off top to end minute wave 3 and this is a very typical impulse for gold. A long extended third wave and a very swift strong fifth wave. This one's shorter than the third wave but they don't have to be, they can and quite often are a lot longer. The fourth waves are relatively shallow, this one 0 0.16, 0 0.2, 0 0.19, really shallow fourth waves in comparison to these deep second wave corrections. MACD, helpful to show your, if your wave count is on track, the strongest portion of the third wave should show the strongest upward momentum and that's the end of this blow off top for minute 3. Let's have a look at some technicals for the same period of time from the 3rd of December. This point down here and here's that last point here up in March. I've drawn a resistance line here across these highs. Price broke through here, came down, curved down to test support and then moved up and away. That's very very typical behaviour of gold after it breaks through the consolidation zone. This one, a sloped resistance line, then found support here. Once it's done that and it starts to move up and away then we can start to see some real building of volume and an increase in momentum. Candlestick patterns when gold is in a strong trend aren't always perfect. Here we've got a bearish engulfing candlestick. We've got a little doji here, that was not a reversal. This bearish engulfing candlestick also not a reversal. If you had been back in this day here and you had looked at this movement you might not, if you hadn't had a good Elliott wave count for it, you might not have been very confident about what was going to happen next. We've got declining volume, we've got a reversal candlestick pattern here, now negated because this candlestick's made a new high. On balance volume would have been very bullish though, that's a strong warning and that's why I take it so seriously. RSI would have been getting pretty close to overbought. ADX would have told you you've still got an upward trend and it's only about 25 so there's still plenty of room to run, it's nowhere near extreme yet. ATR though would have been declining, you might have said there might be something wrong with that trend, a good trend should have an increase in range, not a decrease in range. Stochastics, this one really puts a lot of people off I think. This one can remain quite extreme for quite long periods of time when gold has a strong trend. Stochastics being overbrought absolutely did not mean at this point that trend had to end. It was only about halfway done. 
So that would have really put you off. And Bollinger Band slightly contracting at this point. Along the way up, during the strong trend for gold, we also see a few doji. We've got a little one here, another little one here. We've got one here toward the end of it. Doji represents a pause in a trend, just a little breather. It is absolutely not, on its own, a reversal signal. Don't read it as such. Once the trend really gets toward the end of those third waves, then we start to see a good, strong, solid increase in volume. We don't see it every day. You can still have a day along the way, which is a bit lighter. But overall, volume should trend upward when gold is in a bull market. It needs the activity of buyers in order to push price higher. Here we've got our really typical blow off top shown with a good strong volume spike. Bit of a long upper wick here. That was a signal to get out of long positions because that's probably the end of the trend at least for a while. You could have held on if you've got a longer term view to your trades through all this chop and you would have been well rewarded. Now again back here your Elliott wave count really would have been the only thing that's going to tell you the structure's not complete, expect you're going to have shallow fourth wave corrections and overall gold is going to trend up. And it did and it found support at the Fibonacci 13 day moving average. That's why I like to use that one for gold. On balance volume is really useful when we use it with trend lines. It gave a bearish signal here and then another bearish signal here. So what was happening with price at that time? So we've got a bearish signal on this day and another one on this day. So if you're using on balance volume and you're drawing the trend lines correctly, it can be really helpful to tell you when a trend is over and when it's time to get out along with your Elliott wave count. Here's another thing about these strong trends with gold. RSI can reach very extreme points. On the day of this blow off top, RSI was over 85. Now that's really extreme. Now if you expect one of gold's strong third waves must end when RSI reaches just into overbought, you would be misleaded substantially. You would have expected that you needed to get out in here and you would have missed the strongest piece of movement ahead. So allow for RSI to be strongly overbought and then wait patiently for multiple divergence, good, solid, strong divergence between price and RSI. And when you see that, then you may expect it's more likely to have a high in place. Now if you combine RSI with ADX, this becomes really powerful indeed. Here, this was the day that ADX reached extreme on this downward day here. Price still continued on upward and really it would have been your Elliott wave count which would have allowed to try and find the final high with a little bit more accuracy. But as it continues sideways and upward to make new highs, you've now got declining ADX and strong divergence with RSI at these highs. So even ADX reaching its stream tells you you're going to get a consolidation but it doesn't necessarily at this time frame tell you that that bigger trend is necessarily over. For that one you need to look at the weekly chart. ATR started to decline at the start of this trend and it wasn't until this point here that it really started to show some increase. So declining ATR as well isn't necessarily going to put you in the right direction when gold's developing a third wave. And I've said something already about stochastics. The only other thing I have to add is you really do need to be quite patient with this oscillator. It can remain extreme for long periods of time. What you need to see is stochastics being extreme and exhibiting good, clear, strong divergence with price. Here we've got multiple divergence, double divergence between stochastics and price. Bollinger bands tend to expand when gold has a good strong third wave. As it comes to its end, then we can see some contraction. So we need to take the balance of evidence and weigh it all up to tell us what's happening and see if that supports or doesn't support the Elliott wave count. So take some time perhaps to study those charts and see how gold's third waves behave. That's all from me at the end of the trading week with your video update and I hope that all of our members are having a most fabulous weekend.